people who don't procrastinate, what's the secret? I attack my duties in a strategic way. Every Monday morning, I make a list of weekly tasks. From that list I then call Monday and Tuesday tasks and put the rest of the list away. I then concentrate only on the Monday and Tuesday tasks. On Wednesday morning, I pull out the weekly tasks list and now make a new short list Wednesday and Thursday tasks etc. A big reason for procrastination is that we get overwhelmed with all the tasks that have to be done so we go on survival mode and just don't do anything. This is a well-known psychological phenomenon that is not abnormal or uncommon. The key then to overcome this I think, is to break things down and attack them slowly. Rather than 435 tasks that have to be done in a month, you break them down into 88 tasks that need to be done this week. You then further break it down into 14 tasks that need to be done today. You then put the other lists aside and just go down the list and accomplish your 14 tasks today. Dress as if you were going out. Your brain will feel as if you aren't at home and feel more productive. I like to combine chores with something that I enjoy. I listen to podcasts and music a lot, so when I have to do dishes and laundry, instead of dreading it I look forward to listening to something and tuning the world out for a bit. I also spend a lot towards making the environment I work in interesting. I love customizing and modifying my desk desktop so that it's actually slightly enjoyable to sit on the computer and get stuff done. Passion and Drive it is easier to get things done if you like or enjoy the task. Not everyone can do what you love but maybe you can take on more of the job duties you enjoy. If this isn't possible now, how can you get there one, two, or five years from now? Backwards planning helps. Start with what the finished project and deadline is, and then work backwards setting benchmarks that you want to reach. It gives you obtainable goals, and provides a sense of completion. Planning. Create a daily, weekly, monthly list, this is dependent on your work. You can use paper or online apps, Todoist or Asana, then reorder them by urgency and importance. Prioritization is key. It is easy to get stuck doing a low importance non-urgent task to put off others. Not everything urgent is important and not all important tasks are urgent. Know your peak time. I crush all my biggest projects first thing in the morning. By 3 o'clock, I am useless and no brain power is left in the tank. Avoid time sucks. I do a quick email scan in the morning, and if nothing big happened overnight, I leave everything to be done later. Otherwise, I get stuck answering emails, and it is noon before I know it. I'm still doing something, so I feel like I'm working but what I'm really doing is procrastinating. In the end it all comes down to motivation and habits. There are plenty of books out there, The Power of Habit and Atomic Habits, that speak on how creating habits is more important than goal setting. Motivation, well that is harder to nail down. If you aren't motivated by what you do, then do some internal digging to see why you are doing it. If you can't find any reason to be motivated, then maybe explore some of the things that do motivate you and see if you can make changes to get there. Build your talent stack. Make lists or use a calendar. Write things like from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. I'm going to work on my resume. When it's right in front of you like that, it's like a doctor's appointment. You just do it because it's scheduled. Or even, from 1 p.m. to 1.10 p.m. Start small if you struggle and it will form habits. I found reasons to care. It's easy to put something off when you feel like it only affects you, but there comes a point, particularly in relationships, where you get an opportunity to realize that your inaction causes other people inconvenience, stress, discomfort, or anger. In a weird way, the procrastination can be reversed, if you don't take five minutes out of your day to do that one tiny thing right now. The temporary comfort you otherwise gain by putting it off translates to about five hours of upsetting that someone who you deeply care for. Remember when your parents said they aren't mad, they're disappointed? That applies. Look for the small accomplishments first, and the larger ones seem less intimidating. Rest assured, that time to yourself is going to feel so much more satisfying when you feel that you've earned it. If you're having trouble getting started, the first step is too big. Things seem hard to start because you don't actually know what physical, visible action is necessary to move them forward. Think about what that is and do it, even if it's just opening the Word document you're trying to make progress on and reviewing it. Look up getting things done, the whole system changed my life. If reading the entire book is intimidating, 
check the videos for getting things done on YouTube. The quickest summary of it is that your brain is for having ideas, not keeping them. Your brain can remember all the little things that you need to do, but isn't good at prioritizing or keeping the fine details. The more stuff you try to keep up there, the more stress you're putting on your brain. So the solution to this is to offload as many of these tasks, projects, and appointments to lists or a calendar so you don't have to burn brain power on remembering everything. It helped me to stop procrastinating as much when I stopped thinking that it was just a part of my personality, and instead started recognizing it as an unhealthy coping mechanism that I had learned throughout my childhood to deal with anxiety. Now when I want to procrastinate, I try to figure out what about the task is making me anxious and remind myself that I feel 10 times more anxious when I have a task looming over my head. 1. None of this is a secret. Growth comes from discomfort. Muscle growth comes from tearing muscles. Weight loss comes from burning energy stores. Knowledge comes from challenging our existing understand of the world. Likewise, productivity comes from doing what we don't want now for the sake of what we do want in the long run. Until you accept that, there isn't an easy way. You need to get uncomfortable to truly grow in anything, too. Adopt a better mindset. Identify as a productive person and fail rather than as a procrastinator who's meeting expectations. Our minds have a way of wanting to meet expectations, for better and for worse. Identity is more important than we realize. 3. Become more emotionally intelligent and self-aware. Often procrastination isn't a problem with distraction or lack of willpower, but rather the inability to cope with other matters in life. It's like figuring out why you're having a reoccurring nightmare. 4. Study up on habits. They're rather simple really, but it's key that you understand exactly how we're basically the result of our neural programming. We don't make as many free decisions as we think on a given basis. Again, it ties back to our identity. We're simple creatures that like to follow predictable routines, so it's essential that you break up and restructure your routines. 5. When in doubt, start with one of the three keystone habits of better health, sleep, fitness, food, any one of the three will generally help with the other two, which will then snowball into many other good habits during your life. Essentially with better health and more energy, comes a better mood, more productivity, and more trust in the idea that initial discomfort leads to more lifelong satisfaction. 6. Another key trick, whenever you think of something that ought to be done, unless you truly have something more important happening right now, just tell yourself do it now. In the middle of an episode on TV and remember the laundry needs done? No, don't wait until after the episode, do it now. Need something from the grocery store for dinner you're planning to make in a few days? No, it can't wait, do it now. This ties in with number 4. You're rewiring your brain to associate the acknowledgement of a to-do item with simply getting it done ASAP, as opposed to believing it can be addressed later. So once something big important does come along, you just get it over without of a habit rather than as a deliberate effort on your part. <laughs> Procrastination is just your brain telling you, A, this isn't top priority right now. I can finish this later and still get an acceptable grade or whatever. Now, imagine if instead of just one exam in a week, you had three exams in a week. Even your lazy ass is going to start studying at least a week or two in advance. Increase the amount of work you need to do. Get more deadlines and you'll be amazed at how you don't procrastinate anymore. You simply have too much free time. I wake up and shower and compartmentalize my tasks in small, achievable goals. Clean the garages actually, put the tools away, sort lumber, sweep the floor. Clean the kitchen is actually, empty the dishwasher, empty the sink, clean the stove, vacuum. I then reward myself with small, time boxed breaks. Garage is clean. Crack a beer and sit in the sun for 10 minutes. I am a bad procrastinator and for me I think it relates heavily to the fact my mind is largely in the moment and has difficulty projecting into the future. For example I find it very hard to plan holidays or even get excited about them when they are booked. If it needs doing now or in the next day or two I can see the importance and normally get it done. Sometimes several things mount up and they all get on top of me. This happened this weekend and my wife sat me down and we wrote them down. One was paying a deposit and she said, can you do that right now on your phone? My mind fought this hard but I just did it as I was told and once done, it was a huge relief. Then it was easier for the next on the list, 
sending an email, and finally the big one was fitting my camper van windows. This was a two-man job and I had been putting off asking for help. My wife phoned my dad for me and he came over that afternoon and we got it done in a couple of hours. Boom, what a rush. I thought and worried about each task for many hours more than it took to do them. It seems ridiculous to worry for well over a month about a task that literally takes 30 seconds to complete, but this is the nature of our affliction. It is easy to laugh and make jokes but this is a serious mental condition that stops you doing things. Ask for help because mostly it's easy to fix, certainly much easier than depression or anxiety. Pair tasks you don't like with things you love and only do those things you like when you're doing that task. For example, only listen to your favorite podcast while you're cleaning, only snack on your favorite candy while you're studying, only watch your favorite show while you sort laundry, etc. I agree with the you're less likely to procrastinate when you love what you do idea, but let's face it, we can't love every single task that we need to get done. So trick yourself into enjoying it by pairing it with something you actually do like. I've watched a lot of self-development and productivity videos on YouTube to try and find the answer. While there are many tips and tricks to boost your productivity, the root of the issue is just sheer willpower. I, personally, schedule my workload throughout the week and it works for me. For example, I'll do the research for my essay on Monday, then write an outline Tuesday morning, because I have class in the afternoon. On Wednesday I'll write the final paper, then on Thursday I make the Google Slides presentation. I have a hard time just doing something if it wasn't planned. So, on the outside, it might look like I'm putting off my work, and I am, in a way. It's calculated procrastination. I was taught this by my first professor. Think about the reason you procrastinate. For most people, including myself, it is not just to avoid work, but to cover it up with something more enjoyable or instant gratification. When you need to start some work that you don't particularly want to do, think of what you most want to be doing instead. Then think how much more enjoyable it would be without the uncomfortable backdrop of that work. Then work towards that. If you're a bit neurotic like me you end up with a feedback loop where the same voice telling you to avoid the work powers you want to finish it. Just remember, not everything non-work related is procrastinating. When people say they lack motivation, what they usually lack is a plan. So, checklists. Sit down before bed and make a list of things to do for the next day. Some of those can be things that just need to be done. Some can be achievement milestone objectives which increase daily as part of creating a good habit, like I will read 10 pages of a book which interests me. Other than that, dopamine fasting, to be content with less, digital minimalism, to avoid distractions, gut health, for good mental health, and reducing cues for bad habits, read atomic habits, throw in some exercise every now and then, preferably early in the morning if possible, and you're good to go. Just do something. Don't force yourself to do the entire task. Force yourself to start and tell yourself you can stop early if you want. I can't say I don't procrastinate, but right now this is working for me. For me it's hard to start something, but then once I start it's hard to stop. As someone who always gets his work done on time, here goes. Make a mental schedule. Before each day, list out all of your goals for things you want to get done. I do it in my head but a lot of people might benefit from actually writing it down on paper or on their phones. Commit to this schedule, promise yourself that you will get it done by the end of the day no matter what, don't overextend yourself though, and if you work hard and can't get it all done, move the least important stuff to tomorrow's schedule. When you don't feel like it, just tell yourself to do it and do it. The first five minutes might be painful, but when you get into something you might find it hard to stop. Once I get started on my assignments I often am able to stick with them and get them done reasonably quickly, eat while you work. At least for me having some candy, snacks, or drinks really helps to keep me focused while working. For others it may be music. I find this a bit distracting but that may be different for others. Take quick breaks in between assignments. Allow yourself 10-15 minutes to browse Reddit or whatever after each task is completed, but don't stay on too long. Find the time of day where you are most productive. I work best late at night when things are quiet and I find myself least productive in the morning. This is the big one. If you get a task that it isn't due for a while like a week or two in advance, start working on it now. 
Even getting a small start is enough to keep you at it, and you'll find it much less stressful to start working on it now instead of pushing it off. The day you get it assigned, it is the most fresh in your head and you'll find yourself a lot more relaxed while working on it and much more satisfied when you get it done. Getting stuff done early ensures that you have a buffer time. That should something go wrong in your life outside of your control, you aren't going to fall behind anywhere. Having that buffer will help prevent you from becoming stressed about the long term. You will be surprised when you realize just how much less stressed and satisfied you are when you start getting your stuff done early.